just like that, our bread is all done. I just pulled it out of the oven and it has a beautiful golden brown crust on it. You can see. Hi, you guys. Welcome back to Kirshner Farmstead. As promised, we are going to be making bread with the whey that we drained off of our yogurt. Okay, so I believe that I said it's five ingredients. It actually is six ingredients. The whey from the yogurt, oil, yeast, sugar, salt, and flour. That's it. It's super simple. I'm going to be using my stand mixer, but you can absolutely hand knead this if you would like to. I can show you a quick demonstration on the proper technique for kneading. Um, but let's get started. The first thing that we are going to do is we are going to throw the whey into the microwave for one minute. You don't need it super hot. You want to stir it up a little bit, make sure there's no hot spots in it. If there is, you want to let it cool down. You don't want your liquid that you are going to be blooming your yeast in to be hotter than 115 degrees roughly. Okay, so let's get that started. All right, so we are going to fit our mixer with our dough attachment our dough hook, sorry, it's called the dough hook, um, and we're going to pour our whey into the bowl. So pretty much this is using whey instead of using water. That's it. And then we are going to add in our yeast and our sugar. And then we are going to let it bloom for a few minutes, okay? So the yeast is going to eat the sugar and that is what's going to help it activate and bloom. So um, you really do want to add sugar in there. Don't ever add your salt in at the, this stage because salt actually kills yeast. So you just want to wait on the salt until you're adding in the flour. If you like sourdough, you really probably will like this recipe because it has a very like sour taste. It's like, I mean, it's like the yogurt, right? So it's going to have the same, uh, not after it's cooked, but it has the same probiotics that are making the yogurt, the bacteria that's making the yogurt sour is also making the bread sour. So it's kind of like a cheater version of sourdough. It's not sourdough, but it kind of has that flavor. Okay, so our yeast has been sitting for a few minutes and it is starting to bloom, which is good. You want to make sure that and uh, watch for your yeast to bloom so that you know that your yeast is in fact still alive. Sometimes if you store yeast in too warm of an environment or for too long, like if you store yeast in the freezer, it'll pretty much stay good forever. But if you store it in like say your pantry or somewhere like your kitchen cabinet that's not super cool, then it might go bad. So make sure that if you've had yeast for a long time, you test it in a little batch of warm water first before you go through making your whole bread loaf and everything, proofing, trying to proof and make your loaf and then it ends up not rising in the oven. That would be terrible. Okay, so we are going to start adding our other ingredients. We're gonna add about three tablespoons of oil. I'm actually going to reserve, I poured a little bit too much into here. I'm gonna reserve the last of it to put in our bowl for when we proof. Okay, so this is five cups of flour. So we have two cups of whey, one tablespoon of yeast, and two tablespoons of sugar. And now we are going to add in five cups of flour, slowly, okay? You don't want it to poof all over yourself. So we're gonna add a bit of it in, and then turn it on low to start. See, I already made a mess. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna add a little bit more of the flour. You can take a scoop if you want to. I'm just pouring it in there. Now it does take a few minutes for this dough to fully incorporate. Now that you have your flour in, you can add one teaspoon of salt. So the dough is still in the middle of kneading, but I did want to show you if you want to make this recipe without a stand mixer, what you're gonna do is you're going to make a little well in the middle of your flour, which means like push your hand into the middle and make it like a dent, right? Um, and then you are going to want to slowly incorporate in the flour. And you can use a spatula, but it really is easier at that point to just use your hands. Um, so incorporate the flour, mix it around. It's going to be messy, but um, you just keep mixing it, keep mixing it. And then once it starts to form together and all of your flour is getting wet, you're going to put it onto your working surface. And then the way, the best way to knead is you're going to take it. This is kind of a sticky dough. 
Um, but you're going to pull the pull from the front and then pull towards you and push with the hand, the palm of your hand. Okay. And so you're just going to keep doing that. This is a very sticky dough. Um, so it could use a little bit uh, more flour on your working surface, just a little bit if you wanted it to not stick. But um, I'm just going to knead through it. The, the longer you knead it, the more the gluten forms inside of your bread. So from the flour, right? So you're going to, it's going to become more elastic -y as you knead it more. Uh, but I am going to put it back into my mixer now and let it keep doing its thing so that I don't have to, you know, <laughs> but that is, it is absolutely possible. If you're hand kneading, what my chefs told me in culinary school is that you knead until you feel like you can't knead anymore and you go for five more minutes. That's when your bread is done. Okay. So keep that in mind. If you feel like your arm is going to fall off, keep going for five more minutes and then you're golden. Okay, we'll get this back in the mixing bowl and let its arm fall off. <laughs> okay, so our bread is ready to go into the proofer. Now, I have a proof setting on my oven. However, my proof setting doesn't have a steamer. Now, I know some ovens do, but mine doesn't. If you have a proofer on your oven, but you don't have a steam setting, make sure that you put a tray of water in there because you do not want to dry heat bread, even if it is just, even if it's inside of an oven at 100 degrees, then it's still going to dry out the top of your bread if you don't have moisture in there. So what do you do if you don't have a proof setting on your oven? Okay, so the old fashioned way is to take a wet flour sack towel and cut just like what we use for the yogurt and cover over the top of your bowl with a wet towel, okay? Um, and leave it on your counter in a warm location for a couple hours until it doubles in size, right? That's one option. Another option is to use your oven, but what you do is you don't turn it on at all. You put a, you bring a pot of water, a big one. You want like at least a seven or eight quart pot. Bring it to a rolling boil and put it at the base of your oven and then put your bread dough in there and shut the door, okay? So the hot water is going to proof your bread. It does take a little bit longer than if you have a proof setting, but not much. Um, honestly, I did that for years until I just got this oven, this new stove, uh, about a year and a half ago. Um, so that works great. Some people even put them in the bathroom while you're taking a shower. I've never done that, but it was recommended. Um, there's also, you can, they say you can run your dishwasher. I don't have a dishwasher, but you can run your dishwasher and then put it in at the end and like close it and keep the steam in there. Again, I've never done that, but that is another way that you can research to do. Okay, so we're gonna use our bowl. Make sure you have a decent sized bowl, at least double the size of your dough because it's going to double in size, right? You want to put the oil in your bowl, just like a tablespoon or two, it's not a big deal. You can also use Pam. I just never buy Pam, I always use oil. Um, but you can put Pam in there and then you're gonna take your dough, scrape it out. You have a dough scraper, scrape it out of there. and. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to take it and flip it, like roll it around, see, like in the bowl. So you're getting the oil all over the sides of your dough, of your bowl and your dough. So that, and then fl I flip it over upside down. So what went onto the oil to begin with is on the top and it'll rise and it's not going to get a dry top. If you have a dry top when you're proofing, when you shape your final bread dough, you're going to end up with pockets of crusty bread on the inside. So it's really important to not let your bread dry out during the proofing process. If you want to do it on the counter, that's totally fine. Just make sure that your flour sack towel or your tea towel or whatever it is that you, paper towels, if you use that, just make sure that they stay moist. Okay. All right. So we are going to get this into our proofer until it has doubled in size. And that will completely depend on the day. It is super hot today in Northern California. Uh, it's like, Whew, we went from freezing, literally freezing a few days ago, killed half of our tomato plants and basil plants, actually killed practically everything. Um, but now it's 85 degrees. <laughs> but anyways, so it's going to depend on where you live. If where you are is super cold, it's going to take a little longer. If it's super hot, then it'll go faster. All right, so we will be back when this is done. All right, you guys, so our dough has proofed. It is doubled in size. As you can see, it is proofed up a little bit over the top of the bowl. 
Um, you don't want to let your dough proof too long or overproof because then you, when it, when you go to shape it, it's going to break down and it's not, you're not going to get the rise that you want in the oven. So, um, don't leave it for too long in there. I mean, if you do, you'll still get bread and it'll still be delicious, but it's just not going to be quite the same texture. So make sure once it's doubled in size, that's when you're going to want to shape it. So you're going to want to take a little bit of flour and dust your board. So just dust it like that. You don't want it heavily dusted because you don't want to change the um, consistency of your dough. All right. See all those bubbles that we worked so hard to get to build up. We want those in there. All right. So we're not going to overwork the dough. We're just going to flatten it out. Like you saw me just flatten it out. And then we are going to fold it into a loaf shape, right? It was super easy. This is a really soft dough. If you have two little loaf pans, like two nine inch loaf pans, then you're going to want to separate your dough in half and make two. Okay. So you could do this and cut it in half and then take one and put it in each one. Okay. So I'm going to take mine and these Pullman loaf pans. Oh my gosh. I can't say enough good about them. They are amazing. Um, we are going to let this sit for about, oh, I turned on my oven to 350 degrees and we are going to let this sit until the oven has preheated, which is about 10 to 15 minutes or so. And that is going to be the resting stage. So it's, it's either like a second proof or resting, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, and that is going to be, it's going to rise up a little bit and then we're going to take it and put it in the oven. Okay. So you want to bake your bread until it has a nice golden brown crust over it. If you would like to take a thermometer and put it into your bread, poke it into the center. You don't want to go all the way through to the edges. Okay and have it be 190 degrees. That'll get you a nice, soft, moist bread. It's about 30 minutes until a loaf of bread is done, but it depends on the size, shape, everything. So um, you can use a thermometer if you want to back up, but I normally just go by sight and about 30 minutes. And also use your nose. Once you start smelling the bread, give it about five minutes and it'll be done most likely. All right, we're gonna get this in and then we will be back to show you the finished product. Okay, you guys, and just like that, our bread is all done. I just pulled it out of the oven, and it has a beautiful golden brown crust on it. You can see the Pullman pan has a tight-fitting lid so that it makes a perfect square loaf for sandwich bread. Um, now, of course, if you didn't have the lid, it would dome and make a nice, like, you know, dome-shaped bread. Um, this is one of the reasons right here why I absolutely love the Pullman loaf pans. Watch how easily this comes out of the pan. Just like that. And it's out. All right, you guys, this smells so delicious. We need to, I know everybody says it, but we need to make smell vision It has like a sour smell to it, but you know, not in a bad way, but more like sourdough. Um, and that is how you can make a loaf of bread out of something most people would just throw out after making their own yogurt. I hope that you guys try how, try both making your own yogurt and making your own bread after you make your yogurt. And if you've been making your own yogurt for a while, maybe try out the bread if you never have. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that you will like and subscribe and share with all of your friends. All right, you guys have a great day. Bye.